Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. The Federal Ministry of Health in November estimates that the number of Nigerians suffering from mental health illness at 30%. This formed a major discourse at the largest human resources event in Nigeria, the Chartered Institute of Personnel Management's 50th National Conference, with several human resources managers estimating that these figures may be even higher with their respective experiences in their organizations. Joining us now to speak on the many risk factors for mental health that may be present in the working environment and the support employees need to carry out their work effectively through it all is psychiatrist Dr. Memuna Kaduri. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning Dr. Good morning. Good morning. According to the World Health Thank Organization, you a negative working environment can impact your physical and mental health. Yeah. Let me just start by asking you, what constitutes a negative working environment? An environment that is not enabling, an environment that is not encouraging um, expression in regardless of the, of course, the policy in the workplace. An environment where there's harassment, bullying, um, talking down on staff, reducing their self-esteem, an environment where there's no interpersonal relationship as per se, an environment where, aside from all the numerous welfare benefits, you are not allowed, you are, there's so much work overload. Working up to 80 hours per week is definitely a no-no. And telling your staff to still work outside working hours like by answering their emails is also not so encouraging. So all that and more constitute a negative working environment. But so when you work, oh, sorry, if you, when you work extra hours and get paid, is that still constituting a negative working, working environment? It depends on the individual. We are all individualized. And for the fact that some individuals, that may not be their motivation. Mm. And if they are not pushed to, to accept that as one of the um, stipends or a backup, it may not be the person's own way of getting where enumerated. So the fact that you are being paid for working extra hours may not be my thing. I would rather have my own space, my time, rather than taking the money. Mm. Right. How, about, how about people that go into jobs knowing that this is a high-risk job and this is what you get? It's a pressure-reading job. And they said, take it. How do you define that? Is that still a negative working environment? The truth is that most times, most organizations do not understand the risk factors people are already experiencing before they start work. Some of us, if not all of us, have been given some certain mental health risk factors. For example, history of family, a mental illness in the family. So that individual, knowing that there's history, but does not really understand the impact that would make on him or her. Taking such a high-risk job, despite the money he or she is going to be paid, that person is already given. That high-risk job is a chosen. And, and with that, there may be issues that he, he, he or she may not be in control of. Would you, but let's come to reality right now. Yes. People need to feed families. People need to take mm -hmm. care of their basic needs. And you have a job that is paid well, and, but nevertheless, it's a little bit, like you said, negative, okay. impacting negatively on yeah. your mental health. Would you advise the people to probably stay broke, stay poor? rather than take the job and probably for uh, and probably and that takes us to the fact that you want to stay rich comfortable and every other thing would you rather take that in expense of your sanity the truth is that you will have it all at the end of the day you spend all that money trying to manage yourself okay, i would take right. it i do i do <laughs> <laughs> because what is actually key in life? Mental the, health is mental key. Health you, is must, well. you must prioritize that. Yeah. Health is wealth. Mm. All right. So you're <laughs> part of this um, um, employer's assistance program, yeah. and yeah. The, the aim is to support um, organizations yeah. with um, their staff that yeah. are suffering from uh, mental health issues. Talk to us about that. Anyway. So employees assistance program started from the U.S. Of course, mm -hmm. everything it's most global, times it's a yeah. global thing, and it's part out from the fact regarding to substance use in the workplace. But with time, they found out that it's not only substance use that is a major reason why people are dealing with challenges in the workplace. Relationship challenges, dealing with a child with special needs, financial issues, um, legal issues, and many more, aside from stress and all that. So it has now gone to several other countries. And luckily, in Nigeria, in 2015, we were able to register with the 
corporate um, with the CAC. In, 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 of course, we had a lot of challenges because they thought it was a labor um, union and all that. So we had to make them know that we are going to be support services to organizations in helping them deal with emotional and psychological issues. So in essence, it's for prevention and early intervention, not okay. necessarily treatment. So that people will be able to have um, live healthily, people will be happier in the workplace because we spend one third of our time in the workplace. We need to be happy while working, not necessarily the money. So when we have the EAP uh, provider, it may be internal if you have the wherewithal to have somebody in-house, fine, but most times it's usually external or it can be hybrid, like the in-house legal counsel and then they have cases they give to the outside lawyers. So it can be hybrid in whichever form we want to give it. But as it is right now, most of the multinationals are on board because they have international policies backing them. A lot of the Nigerian companies are still like looking, okay, what's this? Uh, we are not mad here, so what are you bringing on board? So we are letting them know it's not about madness, it's about the prevention because we want to boost productivity, we want to be able to reduce their health care costs for their employees, we want to be able to reduce absenteeism. And of course, overall, for one dollar spent on any employee, you are getting four dollars back. Translate it to Naira. For 360 Naira you are spending on any employee, you are getting 144 Naira back on return on investment. So if every employer understands this, they will know that mental health prioritization in the workplace is not only essential but very important. Yeah, I can yeah. imagine the skepticism in a country where the mental health law is still called Lunacy Act. Yeah. Uh, but let me, let me ask think, you this. Um, 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 sorry. Um, what, are there particular professions, organizations that are susceptible to mental health problems? It cuts across all communities, all gender, races, social class, religious status, irrespective for everyone. It's just that some people are more at risk than others. Yeah, but I'm talking about the workplace now. So are there professions where these mental health challenges are more prone? Yeah, high-risk um, environment, urbanized areas. So we are... In, Ibadan and Lagos now, when you compare them, Ibadan people can go home for lunch. Lagos people can hardly go home for lunch. They can't Just... go home for anything. <laughs> <laughs> because of the traffic, yes. Yeah. So we are more at risk in Lagos as against a more rural or suburban area. All right, did you have a question to me? Yes, I did. In a practical sense, this yeah. EAP initiative, you likened it to in-house legal counsel in a company. Yeah. But it, in Nigeria, it's slightly different because the stigma exists, such mm. that if you have an in-house counselor, and an individual, an employee, needs counseling, some yeah. advice to mm -hmm. some preemptive measures. Exactly. The next thing that the person will hear through the office, office grapevine is that, oh, they're mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. lunatic, oh, they're mm -hmm. mad. So it's not encouraging for people to even come forward and use these service. Yes, yeah, you're even very if it's right. I, I'm going to interject <laughs> real quick because this is one of the things that I wanted to highlight yeah. in the program, which I think it's um, um, strange, is that. Your program is highly confidential, correct? Yes, like, and, and so now the question, not, not to just jump on your question, because I wanted her to just cover everything at the mm -hmm. same time, um, is that how can the employers mm -hmm. track performance if it is highly confidential? So that's... And following on to, to complete my question, we had recently the, well, a bit of an imbroglio in the Lagos State um, APC primaries mm -hmm. between the incumbents and Indeed. the contender Indeed. to the throne. And he um, divulged what ought to be confidential, confidential. medical mm -hmm. information, if at all it was even factual. Yeah. So how would these things be avoided? This is why people don't access yeah. these services. Good. I, I love this uh, particular questions you, you're putting to me through, because this has been a reoccurring question for every organization that's want, that wants to sign on board. Like, OK, we are going to give you money. And then you're going to be having um, confidential um, counseling sessions with our employees. How we would understand that this money is being well used and productivity and all that. And from the other aspect of the employees, they're like, are you sure you're not going to divulge my information to the HR union? Is anybody not going to know about this? The truth is that we sign an agreement. It's not, so it's not a memorandum of understanding. It's an agreement that this service we are going to provide for you is 100% confidential, except, so there's always an exception. Homicide, suicide. If that somebody else is at risk in the organization that my client is telling me I'm going to kill X, Y, Z because it's disturbing me in the workplace, that's an exception. Or I'm going to kill myself 
that is an exception. So that confidentiality is not totally breached, but we are going to let you know that we're going to take necessary actions in dealing with that. So for us, organizations that have signed up, but somehow some 100 percent organizations in Nigeria have already signed up. It's 100 percent confidential. They don't know who calls us. They don't know who we are dealing with. At the end of the month, we give them a report showing the demographics, male, female, the departments um, that people have called in, the symptoms that they are, that are overwhelming, and they will build up a business case. So if, for example, a procurement unit in a finance industry, they are dealing with the women, they are dealing with more um, issues with domestic violence, that's a business case to, do, to discuss domestic violence in the workplace, not necessary with the procurement department. All right, um, let so it me covers have... everybody. So they will not narrow down. Because if you narrow down to them, they will know they are the ones dealing with that challenge. Yeah. All right. Let me mm -hmm. just let me just throw this one in. What's your success rate and what's your penetration rate in Nigeria? And is this a far? Because we get to see things like this come up. This EAD, yeah. for example, we get to see Six Sigma. Yeah. All right. Uh, it becomes a far. People talk about it. Companies actually sign up for it after a while blows away, you know, here emotional intelligence mm. comes into being. Mm. How is this kind of different from all those facts that they actually throw on companies? And what's your penetration rate and your success rate in Nigeria? Good. As of now, penetration is still less than 20 percent because Nigerians, in quotes, there's still stigma attached to mental illnesses. So what we want to educate people on is mental literacy. Mm -hmm. Because when we have mental literacy, it will reduce the stigma attached to mental illness. That in a workplace, for example, for a few years now, I'm not working at Rice TV, you can come in and talk about depression. And nobody's going to look at you and like, really? I'm sure this is definitely more than the depression. But when you are able to talk about it, we all know that, you know, um, the problem discussed is half solved. And of course, the bridger between the top management and the other employees are the line managers. So we try as much as possible to bring them on board, do trainings for them, like mental force aid. How many people understand what mental force aid is? We understand CPR, that somebody is going through a problem we are resuscitating. But mental force aid is also a, a, a training that people can have in ability to be able to deal with anxiety, depression, panic, Can and you all take that. us through mental health first aid? So mental first aid, for example, if somebody's having a panic attack, now I'm not going to freak out or I'm just going to trivialize the person's issues or mm -hmm. be in denial. The first thing I'm going to do is, of course, introduce myself, make eye contact, make the person comfortable. For us in Nigeria, a lot of cultural and religious perspective comes in. So I'm not going to hold your hand like if we're in, in the UK or whatever. At least take greater distance. If you are sitting on the floor, I will try to sit on the floor with you. And then start interacting with you with regards to what are you feeling? How are you feeling? Any problem? I'm here to help you. My name is this. I'm a certified mental health first aid. And gradually, you take the person through the process while letting somebody around you get to the, if it's at the airport, get to the uh, airport clinic that, look, there's somebody at Terminal this who is experiencing this. It's a very effective way of dealing with crisis at that point. I mean, the person at his own point of need. So, you know, about... um, so the second question I asked, yeah. what's, how is it different from the EAP program? How is it different from? Emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence, six six mile ocean, blue ocean. It's all like encompassing. That. That's the beauty about EAP. So EAP is not just on mental health. It takes care of financial issues, legal issues, coaching. So it's all encompassing, and it's not dedicated to a particular area of field. Any one of you here can be an EAP practitioner. Okay, That's so the beauty about it. Great. Uh, <laughs> now, promoting mental health in Nigeria is a dif difficult task, and yeah. we know why. The reasons attached to it. Uh, but how do you convince these organizations that there's something in for them? I mean, what do they stand to benefit, really? Um, they're struggling with keeping the generators working because there's no mm. power to run their businesses. They have to pay salaries at the end of the month, and the businesses have to keep running. And then you come in and tell me, my staff need to be mentally healthy. What is in for me? Like, what do I get, stand to benefit? Beautiful question. Beautiful question. People make it happen. Mm. And people that are not both mentally and physically healthy cannot function. Whether you have all the generators you don't have, you have light issues, water issues, if people are not there, you definitely not have income. So profitability is what the employer is very concerned about. Exactly. But profitability without productivity is zero. So we are going to preach value proposition. We are going to preach return on investment. For the money you are putting on board, you are going to have 
you know, reduce health, health care costs for this individual. You are going to reduce absenteeism for this individual. You are going to boost productivity because studies have actually shown that over 25 million Nigerians are dealing with depression. And the cost or direct or indirect cost that goes in in management of this individual runs into billions. Because they keep going back to the hospital. They are not coming to tell you I'm dealing with depression. So the money you lose because people are hiding, they cannot express themselves, is much more than the profit you are losing. Because you would have made much more if you've created that environment, you've been able to enlighten them about mental health risk and also assist them to get help. So with that, we will find out that productivity most times will boost if there's that um, service available for them to be able to utilize. Are you going to divulge how much it costs an organization to... Uh, to, to tap into this. So, so for example, no, no, it's not, it's not a big deal. We have okay. the EAP um, um, service uses two platforms utilization, that is per person usage, and capitation. Capitation can go as low as 800 naira per, per head of staff, okay. depending if you have like 5,000 staff and above. Utilization, so there's telephonic and the face to face. Telephonic can go between 15, 20, 25,000 naira per head of staff. and Face to face, it's about 30, 35. So on the long run, capitation is better, but because it's still a new service, people are like looking at utilization. Let us see if, like, what the question you asked, will is this okay for us? Is this beneficial? Mm -hmm. Will it make sense? Exactly. How much productivity have we gotten with this service? And of course, now, and I'm um, looking at it in three months, in six months, should we go to capitation? So How long does it run? The program itself. No, it's, it runs as far as there are people in the workplace. Continually. It's, it's a continuous, yes. It's a continuum. Yeah, it's a continuum. So let's See, just like the, the HR. Is the HR is yeah. mainly attached to the HR. So it's the human of the human resources. Okay. Hum, okay. Human I know that yeah. you're, uh, <laughs> um, you're pushing also to um, have this mental health or mental mm. act bill um, passed. Uh, talk to us a little bit about that. Oh, stigma attached to mental illness is really overwhelming. So a lot of times, um, bills have been passed from time in memory. But as it is now, we still have the mental health being in the floor of the assembly, which has been there since 2003. So we need it to be, of course, bills must be pushed, sponsored before it can be passed. So the fact that we use the Lunacy Act of 1958, which states that if anybody is mentally ill, his uh, properties should be sold and be used in managing that individual. That is one of the aspects of lunacy, which is like really seriously. terrible, I, I, which is terrible. And then, of course, you have to go to court to get a letter for this person to be admitted and all that. But if we have a mental act, it, take care, it, takes, it takes care of so many things, apart from people with mental illnesses, neurological issues, disability, because it's a, kind of, it's a form of disability. Yes, because absolutely. as it is now, depression is, by 2020, will be the second leading cause of disability worldwide. Yes, and absolutely. in 2030, where we are going to see how we actualize sustainable development goals, this, uh, this depression will be number one. You know, affecting us with regards to disability in day-to-day -day life. So we need to understand this. And so, despite the fact that we have shortage of psychiatrists in Nigeria, there are more in the UK, Australia, New Zealand, US. So we say I have one psychiatrist to one million Nigerians. So it's not that we ask that many, but the truth is that when a bill is turned into an act, it's not a policy document whereby we can have trained the trainers. We can encourage other people, so that, the, like the primary health care services, which are very important. How many people are there? Nobody. So people come, leave the primary health care, come to a place like psychiatric hospital, Yaba. But where do they go back to? To their community. Who is there to help them in achieving that holistic wellness right, and reintegrating them back into the system? You have been fantastic. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank well, you. it's now time for a short break. Thank you so thank much. You. For